All right, so we've got our logo complete here. Now it's saved here as iDesignLogo.ipt. That means that although these are separate solids, this is all essentially one part. So if I want to make this look super cool and make some changes to the material, right now it's just listed as default. Um, that's how it looks. The material is actually glass. Um, we could come into the appearances so that's this second drop down menu and we can say clear override we want to actually look like the material so now you'll notice that if I put this on to a bit of an angle I'm seeing different faces through this because of the glass material um, let's make that something a little bit um, a little bit more interesting maybe like a metal um, maybe Maybe stainless. I want to see this kind of brushed. Is there a brushed stainless? I was pretty sure there was. Let's try one of these. It might just be the the shade mode I'm working with here. That works. I like it. So it's a very, very mild shine on this. So anyway, now that I've got my material selected <clears throat> and the logo is completely done, we can do some other things with this. So um, what I might want to do is leave this as a part file, right? So I'll just, I'll resave that. Um, I had a keychain, some other features in here, but I don't really want to use that right now. So now what we can do is... Um, open up AutoCAD and see how this looks in AutoCAD. Maybe we we'll want a DWG version of this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come back up to my application menu and I'm going to export this as a DWG. So now when I export this as a DWG I've got my 2D logo. This one I should, probably should have just called 2D instead but um, I'm going to call this one iDesign logo model and save and because I'm kind of anal retentive about this stuff I'm gonna come back up to this guy and I'm gonna actually rename it to 2D because that is our 2D line work otherwise I might forget anyway so that's done so I can come back to AutoCAD now and I'll open this up and we'll see our our model now so open and because of the interesting way that inventor does the sketching that's how it's creating the the planes you'll notice when you come into your AutoCAD drawing it might not be in the orientation that you want it to be in okay so let's just take a look at this in an isometric that's not really what I want and I don't want to see it in a wireframe mode either so I'm gonna come up to view and I'm going to change the view settings to shades of gray is fine because that's pretty much how it looks anyway but I don't want this to be the front I want this to lie flat so I want to see it when I'm looking at the top view so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything and to make this actually a little bit, a little bit more manageable I'm going to union the whole thing so that it's all one piece of geometry and now when I click that you'll see that everything is selected so I select that again and I'm going to type in 3D and you'll notice that as I start to type in rotate it gives me that command this is one of the great aspects of the new AutoCAD is that I start typing in a command and then it predicts well you might want to do something with 3D or as I start to write in rotate it narrows it down for me so now I can just click on that or hit enter for my command now it's gonna ask me for a base point well what I want to do is rotate this 90 degrees so I'm just creating an axis to rotate this on and now it's asking me for that angle oh I think I might have botched that command so I'll just come back to that command there's my am I doing the right command here is it 3d rotate or is it rotate 3d 
I believe there's a difference. So notice again, I type in RO, it's saying rotate. Nope, I want rotate 3D. So yes, there is a bit of a difference. So when I select this, now it's going to give me some options here. I want this two points. Right? I'm creating an axis with a defined line. So I'm going to grab this corner here all the way over. And now I'm going to type in 90. And when I come click on the top part of my view cube, it's kind of what I want, but not exactly. So let me just come back again. Let's repeat that. All right, so I'm just pressing up on my cursor. It's bringing up the last command. And I'm going to select this. And this time, it doesn't really matter where you make your line as long as you make a line. And this time I'm going to make it 180 as my rotation angle. So now I've got what I want. I'll just do a zoom all. And I'll save that as the logo model. And now I can bring this into uh, another application and it'll be in that orientation. All right, so that's probably ready for the next step. Maybe we could bring this into uh, 3ds Max Design, or we could bring this into Revit. Um, for the time being, let's just keep that as saved. We'll get into that in a second.